Hello, Angular fam. So today I want to be talking about signals. Oh, you're going to tell me you're going to talk about the hardest thing that everybody's talking about in the Angular community. Yes, man, that's that's just what it is. It's all about signal these days and fine grain reactivity in your Angular apps. So signals right now is in developer preview. And uh, that means that it's not going to be released until the next version. And then they're going to stabilize the API. But what we're going to do, you're going to find a lot of example already that like uh, my fellow um, Angular people have put out there. What I want us to do today is quickly build an application, actually, that is going to show you the reactiveness that we are talking about with signals. And then in several episodes, we're going to talk about performance and other stuff. But just quickly, I'm going to share with you uh, the app that we're going to be looking at. So let me um, quickly share the screen here. All right. And then here, this is, this is a very simple app, no CSS yet, uh, just a little CSS actually. And then I'm just pretending I have like my five-year-old who's like uh, um, learning like multipl multiplication table. So we're going to just quickly go to the next line. So two by two. And we can always go to the next table. You see how it resets. Everything kind of like reacts to this. We can go to the next line. We can go to the next table. You know, next line. And then on top of it, if we want it to go back, we can rewind one line. And then we can always reset. So I'm going to show you without further ado how to build this inside of Visual Studio Code. Take whatever code editor you want. And if you want to follow along, be my guest. So let's just get started now. So first thing first, let's navigate to our code folder so we can create the project. And before that, let's quickly check on the version for our Angular. Right now we are at 15.2, but we want the developer preview. So we're going to go and use npxp. Angular CLI at next. So that's going to give us like uh, the latest that is not released yet. And here we're just going to use the typical ng new and say ng, uh, let's call it ng multiply by. And um, I think that's going to be, yeah, we're probably not going to need a router and we're going to use CSS. So now that we have that installed, we're going to navigate uh, to the newly created folder and just open it with VS Code with the code dash, uh, code that shortcut. Let's check our ng version. And here for this project, and well, we don't need to do that. For this project, we are going to be at 16.0, which is going to have the signal uh, class in there. So let's look at our node version real quick. Okay, we are at 18. So now let's eliminate these two files. We're not going to need them. And opening the component file, now let's just use template here. And um, let's uh, just at the same time too for the styles, let's just put an empty array. And just to make sure that this works, let's uh, have something that will output to the screen. And going into our integrated terminal, we're going to run like the project with ng-serve. We're going to go to the port 9000 and then dash, oh, this is a zero, no, dash O. There you go. And uh, looking at it, yeah, so everything is running and we're on version 16. All right. So first thing first, we're going to import a few elements uh, that are now part of Angular Core, if you had, if you had that version. And that's going to be the signal class itself. Then we're going to go with the settable signal. Uh, interface, that's an interface, the computed class, and the effect class, which are the different things that the API exposes. And um, we're going to go through each of that. So first thing, let's create our first settable signal. And I'm saying settable signal because there's a difference between the two. So the very first settable signal for this application is going to be called multiply by. Let's just put the type right now. I know that we have a value, but let's just put the type. And that's going to be set a double signal that's going to have a number value. And the default value is going to be 2. So that's why we have signal 2 right there. Now, the next one is going to be count. That's going to allow us to track the different lines. And that's going to be uh, a signal 2. 
but one, number one for the default value. And finally, we have a table, but for the table, we want to put like a settable signal again, but that's going to be an array of strings. So the different lines, two times one, two times two, and so forth and so on. And the default value is just going to be an empty array for now. Now, uh, that is like, you know, uh, our initial setup. And then looking at the interface, this allows us to have access to set, update, and mutate. Okay. Now going back, what we're going to do is we're going to put a function called next line. This is going to give us the line that is going to be in the multiplication table. And here for the next line, what we're going to do, we're going to use the update method that takes in like a callback function and we're just going to increment the line, uh, the count by one. Okay. Uh, let's create a second private function here that is just going to give us the line in a readable format. So basically here, we're going to first take a constant that will be the product and the product for that line would be the count value a times multiply by, okay? And then the readable format that I'm talking about, we're gonna return a string that will show the entire operation, two times one equals two, okay? Now we can go back to our next line, and in here, we're gonna do that, we're gonna update the table, and basically using the spread operator, we'll take whatever the table value was, and then we'll add the new line. And we're still using the update since we had a settable signal, we have access to the update. Okay, and now we can update the default value of our table to have the first line. In order now for us to see it, we have to like uh, just put a few things in our template. So uh, let's wrap everything in the section. And I don't know, maybe let's give it a couple classes here. App header M table. Yeah, this is gonna be in the final CSS. And just for the user experience here, uh, let's close this first. And then we will probably add like um, a header just to show that um, we are doing multiply by, but let's add a dynamic value here. The dynamic value would be like the multiply by, and this is how we're gonna be calling the value of the signal in our template. It's just gonna be a function call in our template, and that's just gonna give us like the latest value. So now that we have that, if we go back, you see that in our UI, we see the first expression of our signal, the dynamic value is there. Coming back, um, let's just have a div maybe, that's gonna wrap the different buttons we're gonna have for this UI. Yeah, it's gonna be, so we can flex them maybe. Um, and we're gonna have our first button here. And the first button is just gonna give us the next line. So we're gonna have a click event. And on that click event, all we have to do is just call the next line and give it that label of next line, basically, okay? So um, let's just clean this up a little bit so we don't have any syntax error. And uh, what can we address next here? Uh, we wanna be able to display actually that line. So let's start a new section. Uh, let's give it like uh, an M table. And then for displaying that line, we're gonna be looking at our first um, uh, what we call our first computed value. So a computed value is gonna be something that is derived from an existing signal. So we're gonna call this table display and it's gonna be a signal, but this time we're using the computed class that is gonna take a callback function, you know, and the, the reason why it's giving an error, it's not just a string, it's a signal that is gonna be like, uh, that has a string value. But we need to get like the signal interface uh, for, that, uh, for that error to go away. So you see that we have our first computed value, which is a derived, and that's gonna just have this in memory. And anytime that the settable signal changes, it's gonna update this value. 
which where is that reactivity is coming going to be coming from so now to display it we just can use like the pre tag here and just make a call to that table display coming back to our ui you see that it has been updated and when we click on the next line it gives us the next line you know and then so forth and so on so pretty cool okay now let's go to our first second part of the ui we're gonna have another button here that is allowing us to reset the table. So starting at one. So let's have like a reset function. And here, we're gonna just like uh, uh, reset the count to one and the table to the first line, basically. Very straightforward. So using setters on our signals, we can just do that. And you see the functionality that we have now. And you see the reactivity that we're starting to build. Very simple, very intuitive. I mean, I'm saying this is beautiful. Come on now. <laughs> so now let's go to our next button here. And here we just want to get like um, the next table. So let's say now our kid is comfortable with the table of two. She wants to go to the table of three. So we have to create the next table function. And you might have guessed that the very first thing that we're going to do here, we're going to update the multiply by and we're going to reset our table again. So then we just uh, update that multiply by value by incrementing it and then we're resetting. So now we can click on our next line and you see that the dynamic value that we had is going to update everywhere that it's been, uh, it's been listening to. So you see, we can go to any other next table and we have that functionality. Pretty awesome. All right. So um, one quick thing here. Let's now add like um, one final thing that will allow us to rewind. So rewinding meaning that just going to the previous line. So we don't want to kill the stuff. We just want to rewind it to the previous line. So in rewind here, what we're going to do is we're just going to decrement the count and then for the table, we're just going to slice out the last line. Okay? But now we want to be able to show this in the template. So what we're going to do, we go back and then we have our rewind, which works pretty well, but there's a little problem. If we go too much on the rewind, <laughs> we, risk the, uh, we run the risk of like going over one, and then eventually starting to have negative values. So if we want to prevent that, we want to be able to have like uh, something that will disable the button. So in order to do that, let's go and create a new um, uh, computed value that we're going to call stop rewind. And stop rewind is going to be a computed one that's going to be derived uh, from count because we're going to only worry about if count is equal to one. So if count is equal to one, we want to disable the button. So it's never going to go to zero and it's always going to be, it's going to be starting at one. So we do a computed again this time. And then we just make sure that we do this count is going to be, uh, if, if this is true, stop rewind should be, uh, activated. But now in order for that to happen, we have to go into our template and we're going to bind it with an attribute. So um, let's go back to the template and where we have the rewind button. Let's make sure we're on the rewind button. Here we're going to do a binding with the attribute disabled. Okay. And we're going to just pass in the rule uh, for stop rewind right there and pass in true or pass in null, null right there. Okay, so doing this, when we go back to our template, by default, the rewind is disabled. And as soon as we start going to another line, and we rewind, and when we come back, you see, we can do it for the tables. This is going to be all around. Now, last but not least, let's quickly look at the effect here and use it inside of the next line context. So inside of next line, what we're going to do, we're going to capture every time there's a change. This is, for example, when 
there's a change and like traditionally you would want to go and like call HTTP or something. But here we're just going to show basically like, you know, the values of effect, I mean, of count and then like uh, the line value. That's all we're going to show in here. But effects are very powerful and they can be used like anytime you want to make that extra API call or whatever else, as long as you're having inside of like uh, a context you can use and grab it here and make it the proper change. So when we go here, we can go back to our developer tools, opening it. And whenever we're running it, you see that we have that going. And anytime we click on next line, we have that. So the big thing though is get line is just like a regular function. And anytime that we call it, it's going to evaluate. Whereas count is a signal. And it being a signal, it's only going to like uh, be affected whenever like uh, it has like a new value. And this is for you a quick preview of what signal is a very powerful uh, way of doing like reactiveness inside of Angular and a very intuitive way because you don't see any subscription. You don't see any promise and anything else, but you see a very highly responsive, uh, responsive application all around. Um, I think there's a lot more to cover, but follow the RFC and then make sure you follow until we get a stable API. In the meantime, enjoy.